Hello and welcome everyone to uh, another Artist Loft uh, class. I am your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and tonight's class is uh, Flower Fundamentals, Drawing a Rose. We had another class last week called Flower Fundamentals, Drawing Datura, where we broke down the Datura flower uh, using diagrams and patterns in, uh, that we can find in the Datura flower, and tonight we'll be doing the same thing with a rose. Uh, I just wanted to mention some of the classes that we have coming up in this series. Um, next week is another free class on uh, drawing hands, blind contour hands, and uh, that class is, um, we're really going to break down how to draw the hands quite a bit because the actual blind contour drawing does not take very much time to uh, to learn and to practice. It's, uh, it's a pretty quick, maybe five minute process to actually do a blind contour drawing, but we're going to spend a lot of time within the class talking about the form of the hand, the contour of the hand, and really breaking it down to basic forms, a lot like we're doing with the, the rose tonight. And then the following week on, uh, so that's June 15th, is the free class on blind contour hands. And I saw that Chanel just dropped that in the chat. And then on June 22nd is a premium class on uh, drawing the wooden mannequin hand. So we'll be doing something a little more involved like this. And so that class is not free. Uh, there's a small fee to register for that class. So you don't want to miss that one. And the uh, class next week, the free class on blind contour hands is definitely going to be a good supplemental to that one if you're really lost on drawing hands and that feels really complicated. So I will very likely be referring back to the, the blind contour hands class during that premium class on drawing the wooden mannequin hand. Um, and then I'll save the, the classes that we have coming up in July, but there's a, a whole uh, series on uh, drawing in grayscale and uh, drawing landscapes. And there'll be two free classes followed by two premium classes, um, uh, for all focused on landscape drawing and uh, grayscale drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my tabletop view and we'll get started here. Um, don't forget to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michael's or Michael's classes. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram, uh, I am at Adrian Hodge Art on Instagram. I'm Adrian Hodge Fine Art on Facebook. And there's some of my personal work on a couple more of my business cards that you might check out. Do a lot of ethereal uh, skyscapes, also a lot of portraiture. Um, some surrealistic things, and I'm very fascinated with science-based uh, subject matter and the aesthetic of diagrams, so it's no, no accident that so many diagrams are making their way into um, these, these classes. Um, so the supplies that you want tonight are just uh, pretty basic. Some, I've got the artist loft. Uh, sketching pencils or drawing pencils. We're going to be using a variety of H and uh, B pencils. And uh, you're going to want a drawing pad. I've got the, or sketching pad. I've got the Artist Loft uh, drawing pad here. And then a, an Artist Loft synthetic eraser. And then I had three photographs that were uh, there on the supply list for you to print out of this rose. And then the same rose just zoomed in on the photo to the, the center of the picture. And then the same uh, photograph again, but in black and white so that we can look at uh, just the pure value that we're seeing there. Um, and I forgot to look up before the beginning of the class, but I'm sure we have so many knowledgeable folks in the chat tonight and somebody can tell me what type of rose this is because I know there are so many different um, types of roses out there and um, I'm always fascinated with like vintage roses too, you know, it's like apples, sometimes it's hard to get certain like there are species of apples and roses that no longer exist, um, but we have them documented 
Anyway, this is we're going to be drawing this particular rose. The class is called Drawing a Rose. There's so many different roses out there, and a lot of different roses have uh, different shapes and forms. And uh, last week with the Datura, I did draw the Datura from a couple of different angles. Um, mostly I did the center of it um, closed up and then open, but I did talk about it from the side, like the profile view. I'm not going to be doing that tonight. We're just going to be focusing on the center of the rose or, or the rose uh, facing the center of it. So we're not going to be um, doing like a side view of a rose. But, um, you know, there are roses that have more of a bulbous shape, but all roses tend to have the same sort of um, spiral pattern in the center. So uh, while we are using a very specific type of rose here, um, I think you can apply these diagrams to any kind of rose. Any questions at this point, or did anybody happen to know the name of this particular rose that I have here in the photograph? Um, so we haven't got anything about the rose yet, but we did have one question, but it's actually about your July 13th drawing class. What is willow charcoal and how does it differ from vine charcoal? Can you oh, use charcoal sticks? That is a very good question. Um, so I put just the willow charcoal on the supply list, even though I had both uh, vine and willow charcoal when I was uh, prepping for that class. And I just uh, found that the, the willow charcoal, it was easier to manipulate on, on the page. I wanted us to be really loose in that class. It's for the uh, landscape study class. And I wanted us to really um, do a lot of thumbnails and be really loose. And, um, and so, yeah, the willow charcoal is just, uh, it, it's easier to work in a sketchbook with. The vine charcoal is really better for painting. So you can use the vine charcoal to paint directly, or sorry, to draw directly onto your canvas. And um, then you can kind of wipe it away. It's really easy to kind of just like blow on it and make it go away. And that's why in your sketchbook, that's not so good because it's gonna not hold down in your sketchbook very well. So um, yeah, thank you for that question. I mean, I'm sure I'll say it at the beginning of that class when that comes up, but yeah, specifically, I wanted you to use the willow charcoal and not the vine charcoal. You'll have more issues sketching in a sketchbook with, um, with the vine charcoal. Good question. And I see somebody said it's a tea rose. Okay, so we're drawing tea roses. I could have said more specifically tonight that this class was on drawing a tea rose. Um, because yeah, I was kind of torn, like I wanted to maybe show some different types of roses or the, you know, types of rose that has more of like a bulbous shape to it. But um, this was the one that I, I broke down and I just don't think there's enough time in an hour to go into different types of roses. Um, I also, so before we dive in, I wanted to reference one class that you might look at um, as a supplement to this one or two classes actually. There was a class way back or two classes early on in this series called um, on sketching techniques or um, sorry, shading techniques. And um, so the, it was shading techniques part one and part two. Chanel has the link she can drop in the chat, but if you're watching this later on YouTube, um, you can find those uh, if you search artist loft shading techniques part one and part two. So it was hatching and cross hatching were the uh, two shading techniques we covered in part one. And then in shading techniques part two, we talked about stippling and scribbling. And um, it just so happened that I used the same reference photo for the, uh, the class on scribbling, where I talked about uh, scribbling using uh, a flower rose. And we didn't necessarily build towards these products in the class. These were just sort of the like very, um, you know, advanced uh, examples that I, I showed that I, I've just, you know, had for a while as a, a reference here. But um, yeah, so I just thought I'd reference that since I've got the same rows drawn in uh, using the scribbling technique here. And if you wanted to check out those classes, you can see me reference this photo and all of the techniques that I'm using to draw these flowers using those shading techniques. Um, but tonight we are not necessarily going to have a finished product that looks um, anything like this by the end, unless you work really fast. 
Tonight's class is going to be much like last week with drawing Datura. Uh, we're going to just break down the um, the subject of this T rose, and we're going to uh, make some diagrams, and we're going to build on those diagrams, and then we're going to zoom way in to the center of the flower and really try to pick apart, um, you know, just the parts that make up this this whole of of the rose because that is one of the most challenging aspects to drawing anything, but especially drawing something like a complicated subject matter, like a rose or, a, or any type of flower. Uh, the issue that a lot of beginning students tend to run into is trying to kind of draw the whole thing at once or fast forward to the part of the drawing experience where you have the finished product but they might have an impatience for slowing down and really looking at these, you know, these small parts that make up the whole. And um, I just want to point out why it's so important to slow down and look at the parts and to understand the parts and to, you know, master even just one detailed aspect of that subject. And then you can, you know, work towards something like this. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started here if there are no questions. None yet. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I always just like to manage expectations at the beginning of the class and just say, you know, what you can expect to have uh, at the end of class last week. There were a lot of wonderful um, pages full of notes and diagrams and um, some people that, you know, uh, maybe worked quickly, were able to have an image that looked like the Datura flower by the end, but most people had uh, kind of diagrams or images that looked similar to, you know, this example page, and that's great. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start with this first little diagram that I have here. So what I did was I drew this pattern that broke down the main shadows that I'm seeing in the center of this photograph of this T rose. And then I drew these little arrows and lines to show this overall spiral. And then below that, I drew just a spiral with a bunch of arrows coming out of it. So I wanna draw that with you now. Um, so that I can explain why I did that and how that is helpful. Okay, so the pattern that I'm seeing of the shadows, and this is very general, so we're working kind of general to specific here, which is always a good policy. So we're looking at the very generalized, like if I put this photograph across the room and uh, crossed my eyes and uh, just, you know, glanced at it very blurrily, um, what's going to jump out at me is just a few little shadowy shapes and those shadowy shapes kind of follow a little bit of a star pattern. Not really, but we're going to generalize it. Um, and I saw the question just pop up. What pencil are we using? I want you to use a light pencil an H pencil so that your lines are easy to erase. I am going to use a much darker pencil. I'm using an 8B and that is purely so that you can see what I'm doing on the screen because my lines will not show up. So never base the pencil that you're using entirely on the pencil that I'm using because I'm, if I were drawing in my studio right now, I would not be using an 8B to get started. I'm only doing that so that you can see my lines. Um, and if you're uh, unsure about what I mean when I'm talking about the H and B pencils, then you're going to want to refer back to the very first class in this drawing series, um, which I hadn't mentioned yet, but I knew somebody would remind me to. Um, and Chanel has that to drop in the chat as well. It was called Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms. And uh, in that class, I broke down all of the H and B pencils and what they mean and why to use, um, you know, each uh, each one of those pencils and why it's good to start with an H pencil and how to hold your pencil so that you can draw lines that are easy to erase. And I also talked about uh, the basics of drawing uh, contours on a form, which is also going to come up tonight. Um, you know, we're going to be wrapping our lines around the curved surface of these flower petals. 
And if you're working on something that's round, you want your lines to be curved. Otherwise, it's going to appear flat. So like these lines are straight, and those are telling us that this sphere is sitting on a flat surface, and the curved lines are telling us that it's a curved surface. So those were the two things that I talked about. And um, I'm going to come back to, to this in just a moment, by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, H pencil is good to start with. And um, I'm using an 8B just so that you can see my lines. All right, so first I'm just going to draw these little kind of uh, soft triangle shapes that I'm seeing right here. The shadow shape kind of makes a little triangle shape, a soft triangle shape, or maybe a um, like a boomerang kind of a shape. I'm going to do something that looks like that. And then within that, I'm going to do an even more kind of flattened out boomerang shape or triangle shape like this. So that's just being very general, but there's like the inner shadows and then the outer shadows that are happening at the, the center of our rows here. And the spiral that I'm seeing is that these petals stack on top of each other in a way that follows this spiral pattern. So I've drawn kind of the little recycling arrows, right? And the uh, logo for recycling, how you can reduce, reuse, and recycle. And it's a, it's a little spiral, right? So doing that, and then another little curved arrow line coming out from that. So this is our, our diagram, just to start to get our brains thinking in terms of, of this spiral pattern that's happening. And also to get us to really slow down and look at the center of this rose and see how all of these petals are stacked on top of each other in a way that like, they kind of fold on top of each other in a way that follows a spiral. Okay, so if we draw that spiral again, um, I'm just going to take one little curly Q shape and just, you know, keep wrapping it. So now we're getting into the, the outer petals. So here we're just talking about what's happening at the center of the flower. That would be like right here is where it's very dense and the uh, petals are smaller. Um, if you take a petal and you pull, you know, a petal off on the outer sides of pretty much any rose, I think even a more bulbous rose, the petals are going to get a little smaller and a little smaller um, as you get towards the center. But definitely on a rose like this, because I um, have a lot of these roses in my neighborhood and uh, even the, the neighbor who had this rose, she sometimes gives me a little bouquet. She's very sweet. Um, and anyway, when they, I like to dry out flowers and you can see the petals when they kind of shed. And if I don't dry them out fast enough, the petals are, are very small at the center of, of the rose, but on the outer um, edge of the rose, the petals get bigger. So we've got this just repeating a bunch and the, the petals are getting bigger and bigger as they uh, get to the outer edge of the spiral. So last week with the Datura flower, uh, there was a little bit more of a complex shape that was happening, especially with the, the contour lines. Um, and this one, it's I feel like it's not quite as complicated as the Datura flower. Some people may argue with me, but um, you know, it definitely is going to get a little complicated on the petals themselves as they stack on top of each other, but it's so repetitive, you guys. It's the same sort of thing over and over again. So it's the same shapes just stacked over and over on top of each other. So we're going to really isolate or try to isolate a few of these petals before the end of the class and talk about you know, specifically what's happening on each individual petal, if we can, and I'll show you why I'm saying if we can in just a moment. But um, overall, the form of the rose, when you're looking at it at the center like this, is a spiral, 
and then we're having, you know, we're definitely having things come out from the center and kind of curve out and over like this. So I drew these arrows coming out from the center like this just to help you get a sense of the elevation of the overall um, form of the rows. Kind of similar to what's happening just at what was happening at the center of the Datura flower. Or to go back to my apple drawing from you know class one in this series, we're looking at just what's happening at the center of the, the apple core um, at the stem, right? Everything's kind of spiraling out from this vortex at the center, but it's not quite as, uh, you know, the, the vortex is not quite as deep and severe as it is in the center of the apple or as it was on the datura. It's a little more subtle because it's spread out so much, but you've still got this sense of elevation happening where it's a little lower elevation at the center with those smaller petals and then getting bigger and spreading out towards the outer region of the rose. All right, did I lose anybody with those diagrams or is that enlightening? Hopefully it's enlightening and not <laughs> the opposite of enlightening. We did receive a request request from Holly. Um, she asked if you can outline the shadows you see directly on the image because um, she, she's not able to see it as clearly. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm generalizing the shadow, but I was kind of looking at just like this particular shadow. And then I kind of generalized it and repeated that shape right there. That little kind of softened triangle shape or like a boomerang. Like I said, I'm generalizing it. Um, it's very organic. It's not necessarily. And then, you know, I could generalize it and say that I see it again right here or that I see it again, you know, here, but it's a little less triangular. But I'm, I'm generalizing the shape. Like right there, there's a little bit more of a triangle at the center. But the shadows are often stacking in a tri triangle. It's not perfect. I mean, it's an organic thing, so I can't necessarily perfectly break it down to geometric forms, but I'm definitely seeing a lot of that tri triangular shape show up. So I was just trying to generalize it as much as I could. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay. Um, so the next uh, diagram that I wanted to do was talk about like just to generalize it even more is this little thing. So once we've got a handle on the spiral and the elevation, then I want to break it down to kind of the inner and outer uh, regions of petals. So um, I drew these kind of big well, apparently just draw it again. I drew these circles to break it down with, you know, with the size of the petals. So we've got that inner circle at the center where it's very dense and the petals are small. So that's looking at, let me just draw directly on the photo and draw kind of lightly so I can erase later if I want. Okay, so I've got that's the inner circle, right? And then this would be the middle circle. And this is kind of our medium shapes. Uh, and as far as size, uh, the petals are a little bit bigger than the flowers, uh, the petals at the center of the flower. And then this is our outer circle where the petals are much bigger and a lot more spread out. Okay, so that's the inner circle and then the middle circle and then the, the outer circle. So that I think that makes it very, at least it kind of like, you know, if you're like doing a marathon, it's always nice to have those little interludes, right? I mean, because we really are doing a very repetitive marathon here, drawing these this, these petals and they're so repetitive and it's very easy to just like 
run out of steam, I would say, with drawing subjects like this. So that way you don't burn out. You can say, okay, I'm going to draw the inner circle, then I'm going to take a break. <laughs> and then I'm going to work on the outer circle and then take a break and then, or the, the middle circle and then take a break. Okay. So that's what I've done here. And we're definitely not going to have enough time in the hour to, to finish this, but you can see how I slowed down a little bit when I looked at the shadow shapes that I was seeing. And so maybe just uh, the goal that we'll set for ourselves right now is to just break down just one or two shadows in each circle. So let's look at just this shadow. And this shadow right here is definitely the one that I zoomed in on. Um, or no, actually, right here is this is what we're going to do next. I'm going to zoom in on one area and really talk about the contours of a petal. And then I'm going to break down um, a couple of specific petals. And that'll take us to the end of the class. Um, because we're already halfway through here. But um, so yeah, let me look at the photograph and figure out where I was focusing on right here. I think it was this moment. So yeah, right here, you can see like I've got that one really dark little triangular shadow shape and that's right here it's actually more of like a half circle but close enough um i guess i drew it kind of like a half circle and that's another thing don't get too like hard on yourself about trying to make every specific shape perfectly match the shape that you're seeing in the flower we just want to try to aim for you know the more specific organic shapes that we're seeing. We want to get away from, you know, doing this, which would be just really generalizing all of the shapes and making them all identical. So I'll just sketch that again off to the side right here. And this is helpful, I think, just to kind of see the squiggle of shadows that are showing up repeatedly, but we could kind of do these little like, uh, kind of squiggly letter S's and letter C's, like a squiggle letter C and a squiggle S, squiggle letter C, squiggle letter S, you know, you could do that around the whole thing. But if you didn't slow down and like look at every, you know, squiggle every once in a while and like try to make one or two of them look more specific, then it's going to end up not looking as realistic as you might want it to. And I know a lot of people are aiming for the goal of more realism in their, their drawing skills. And that's what probably what brought you to this class. Um, so, but there's nothing wrong with defaulting to these when you get that burnout feeling. As long as you're making some parts of this rose, look more specific like this and you're really honing in on some um, specific areas of value and light that you're seeing, if you kind of just, you know, lazily fill in some of them with like, you know, this squiggle letter C or squiggle letter S and then just kind of shade in a similar way next to them. Um, it's sort of like in that very first class talking about uh, drawing forms where I said, don't edit out the bruise on the apple because the bruise on the apple is what's going to give it character and make it look like an apple. So as long as you're giving your rose like a specific character in a few places, you're going to um, achieve the optical illusion of a more realistic rose. Okay, so we're just honing in on a few specific shadows here. So let's look at this one. Um, you guys tell me what does this uh, shape? We're just looking at this. We're gonna slow down and really look at some specific shapes. So this particular shadow shape that I'm outlining right here, what does that look like? I have one that in my mind, like a shape that I could label that as, what are you guys seeing? Somebody said a house, I love it. I was thinking like holly, like a holly leaf. Somebody said a leaf, Shreya did. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so let's draw just that little shadowy shape. And it might not be perfect, but let's just get it as close to that shape as possible. 
Okay, now let's look at one. Um, and then we can draw the other ones in there too, because I guess I did sketch them. Um, so like this one right here is that one that I was calling kind of a boomerang or a triangle, but it's a little more. Um, oh, somebody else said a diamond. That's good. Yeah. Um, this one's a little more organic than just a triangle. It kind of does this. I don't know, maybe like a witch's hat, or like a sorcerer's hat right there. Okay, and then this one I'm seeing maybe like a trapezoid shape, sort of wonky trapezoid shape. Right here I'm seeing, or like an anvil maybe as well. This one kind of looks like a shoe. <laughs> um, and then we have that little half circle shape right there and then another little half circle and these are just the the darker shadows that I'm seeing at the center there's obviously a lot more shadows and this is where I wanted to make sure I'm talking about the value scale because I realized I kind of skimmed over this a minute ago but we've got this value scale from zero to ten. Zero being our absolute white or blank paper and ten being our absolute black and then five would be like our medium tone, right? And with tonal shading, you want smooth, even continuous shading, but that's not the only way that you can shade. You can use those shading techniques that I mentioned, and you can refer back to that other class that I mentioned as well. But um, these shadows that we're outlining right here are really more of like our eight, or like seven, eight, six, maybe six, seven, eight on the, the value scale, right? Um, or maybe nine, and maybe one or two of them are at a 10 at a absolute dark, but really none of them get that dark. Um, I really exaggerated the value that I was seeing in this, in this photograph to get an image like this. So, and there's nothing wrong with exaggerating, but um, we're just focusing on the, the darkest shadows right now. If we started looking at the like, the threes and fours on the value scale, then we've got a whole nother set of value shapes that I could outline right here, even more diamonds and teardrops and um, little organic shapes like that. So, but I just wanted to focus on just the, the darker shapes right now, because like I said, if we broke down every little shape in this rose, we'd be, we'd be sitting here for a few hours, y'all. Um, Okay, so those are kind of our most prominent shadows that we're seeing at the center of the rose. And really the whole point of this exercise is just to get you to slow down and to look more closely at the parts um, and to understand all the, the basic forms and patterns that we're seeing in the rose. So in this middle region, um, this middle circle, we've got, um, What's defining the shape of this petal is more the shadows around it. So you have a choice to either draw the shape of the petal that's sticking out right there, or maybe the overall shape of the shadow that's surrounding it, the negative space. But you'd actually be drawing, you know, three or four petals behind it if you're doing that. Um, so that's why I kind of used a series of, you know, squiggly lines to fill in most of these but I wanted to at least just focus our attention on, you know, just one little part here. So I'm gonna draw that little petal that's sticking out, even though that petal is actually attached, you know, it's coming out of our inner circle and it's what's creating this shadow right here, but just this part of it and then I'm going to use that tonal shading and I'm still just using my 8B again so that you can see what I'm doing. You might be using a 2B, you might be using your H pencil, whatever feels right to you here as you're just sketching and practicing because this whole thing we're just kind of studying and developing an understanding of this rose, but I'm shading around it. So what I'm shading around it is actually what's drawing attention to that shape. So, and that really goes for a lot of these petals. And we'll get into that more as we break down some of the, the individual petals in just a moment. 
but um, I just wanted to focus our attention here. And you might use that scribbling um, technique is a helpful one to, oh, I just saw Candy said, I will never look at a rose the same way again. I love it. I love to hear stuff like that. Um, okay, so now we've at least focused our attention a little bit on these, these middle petals here in our middle circle. Now let's look at the outer um, circle. So again, it's this is where you're definitely, if you're not using an H pencil already, you're going to want to switch to your H pencils for these because they're so light. If we're talking about the value scale here from zero to 10, where on the value scale would you say are the shadows in our petals um, on these outer edges would fall? You know what? I mean, I'm pointing to it, but I just want you guys to say it. <laughs> I want somebody to answer me in the chat. Okay, good. Yeah, a two or a one, exactly. It's like baby's breath here. It's barely, you know registering on our, our value scale, um, maybe a three, but I would put the shadows that I'm seeing right here at more of like a three, four, five in the middle area. So you can really kind of just think about the volume on the value in this rose as like starting out as the darkest in the center and then getting lighter and lighter as we're going out to the edge, especially on a, you know, white rose like this or mostly white, even though there's some pinks and kind of creamy uh, yellow ochres and stuff happening in this flower or in this rose, you know, on a, a red rose, it's going to be different. Um, but you're probably still going to have some of your darker shadows in the center. Um, but yeah, and here I did exaggerate the, the values and that's always an option for you, but um, you can still see that I got lighter and lighter with my values going out from the center here. So it's really, yeah, more of like a one, a two, or a three on the value scale. And then in the middle, it's more of like a three, four, and a five. And then here it's like uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but it really doesn't get to a 10 except for a few little spots where it gets absolute black. Okay, so I switched to a 2H pencil and I'm looking at Again, more of the negative space around these petals here that I'm drawing the sh shadow shape that I'm seeing just around the edge where it gets that kind of soft pink at the edge. And there's a little bit of a, a V shape, but see the V shape kind of creates the little C shape too that we're seeing. And I, I bet it's kind of hard to see my lines when I'm drawing with this H pencil. So let me go back to my 8B and just draw it darker so you can see it. But I see like a C shape right there. And this would be like, you know, if I were to lazily put these in those like more squiggly shapes. Um, so I, I'm just using a darker pencil again so y'all can see my lines, but you're going to want to do this with a really light uh, pencil so that you get that effect of lighter shadows in this outer area. And then really to make this rose come to life is focusing on the background. And same thing with the Datura last week, I talked about this as well. You get kind of the irregular edge shape that you're seeing at the edge of those um, petals. And then using the side of your pencil to shade in nice and dark, you can start to push the background around it, and that's what's going to really push the petal forward. Or push the overall form forward. But I don't want to spend too much time on, on that because I want to get into do the deep dive into the center here and talk about the contours on some of these specific petals. So we're going to really zoom in right here in this area. This is like, if I could like take a, a little thumbnail view, I'm gonna just be looking at like this box right here and we're gonna like zoom way in on that. And that's what I've done right here is like just that area really zoomed in. I guess I did go a little wider out, but not really. I'm mostly focused on 
this petal, this petal, this petal, this petal, and this petal. Those in this area. Okay, so let's get into that, unless there's any questions. Nope, everybody's just following along, it looks like. Great. Right, so here's where we're really going to talk about those contour lines. And also, this is where I want to um, talk about something I mentioned last week in the Datura class and, you know, kind of gave a preview of this class as I realized. So over here, I tried to isolate a few of the petals. I tried to do a little, you know, let me just do a tutorial where I zoom in on just one petal. And I realized, wow, if I try to just draw one petal, you cannot tell what that is. Like, what is that? You know, if I had like no other information on the page, but that, what would you think you were looking at? I definitely would not look at that and think, oh yeah, that's a rose petal. But this feels a little bit more like a petal or maybe like drapery. And this one does, but this is not just one rose petal. This is one rose petal casting a shadow on another rose petal. And this is two rose petals casting a shadow on another rose petal. So you really, they need each other in order to, you know, create the sense of what we're seeing at the center of the, it's really a community of petals working together to make us see this rose, right? So um, just drawing one of them on its own makes it really impossible to tell what's going on, you know? And when we're drawing, we're trying to create an optical illusion on the page. So I just wanted to, you know, point that out, just how each petal is creating the shadow that's um, making our eyes, you know, see each individual one. It's really hard to just draw an individual petal. Okay, so zooming in, here, I'm going to start and I'm still just using my 8B, even though I'm probably going to end up smudging my lines quite a bit. Let me sharpen this 8B and get it. I just want to make sure my lines are showing up for you guys. If they don't, it kind of takes away from the class experience, even though when I start drawing on my own, I always use a lighter pencil and then move to a darker pencil once I've um, solidified where I want my lines to go. Okay, so I'm zooming in on this one right here, and it kind of feels like a slide, like a children's slide, Good. like an inflatable slide too, because it's not like a perfect, you know, slide shape. I'm gonna go ahead and put that little half circle shadow that I'm seeing right there, and then it comes down like this. That's the overall slide shape. And then it's got a little lip that comes up right here, okay? So that's this particular petal. I'm gonna outline it so you can see what I'm looking at. Here's the slide. I don't wanna outline it too much because then I'll cover up that soft value, but here's the little lip. Okay, so I'm really zooming in here on that, that shape, that form or maybe like a tongue. Okay, so what are the contours of that? We're talking about the elevation of that. It does this, it dips down and then comes back up. So it dips down and then comes back up. And I can tell that it comes back up again because there's a moment right here where the light is hitting it more clearly. It kind of has like a little bubble right there. So it's not just like a total slide. And then right here, we've got the little lip kind of curls back up right there. And then we could do the other cross contour lines like this. And then do these, but we want to notice how it kind of curves back up again right here. Okay, so that's one petal. And then right on top of that, we've got the lip of another petal that 
kind of feels like a top lip right here. This one feels like the shape of a top lip. And then it's got a very bulbous shape to it on top. So it gets thinner. If I'm losing anybody, if it feels like I'm going a little fast, keep in mind, you can always go back and watch the YouTube recording of this later and slow it down and see how I'm breaking these down. Um, so it's kind of like a hat and it curves up like this, got a little rainbow action happening, but then it also becomes kind of rounded too. So you wanna account for that rounding that's happening. So I'm looking at this petal. I am going outside of my little box that I drew there, but I just wanted to point out that I'm, you know, focusing on this general area of the photograph. And if you've got a digital version of this uh, image, this is where it would be really helpful to zoom in on this photograph on your iPad um, or, or iPhone. If you had it, you know, a couple of devices that you could refer to. I know you're probably using one of your devices for the class right now, but if you had a digital version of the photo that you could look at later um, while you're drawing this on your own, it'll be helpful to like really zoom in on it so you can really observe these things on your own. And if you're having trouble observing these forms on your own, then yeah, I definitely recommend going back to that very first class on intro to graphite and drawing forms and maybe trying this with a more simple um, subject matter like an apple or a lemon and um, you know, where I kind of break down the sphere, et cetera. Chanel just dropped it in the chat again. But yeah, if this is just like really going over your head, then um, practice with a more simplified form like an apple first and then come back to this class. And um, hopefully this will make more sense with all of these elevational lines that I'm referring to. But we've had a lot of classes in this series up until now, um, that class intro to graphite and drawing forms was from July last year. And um, we've had multiple classes, you know, over the last almost year, 11 months now, um, where I've used the same method for breaking down a number of subject matters. So, um, okay. And then we've got another little lip here. So the contours or the elevation is kind of curving up right here. All right, let me do one more and then we're going to add the value to this and then we are already at the end of the class you guys it went fast. Okay, this one has it's again it's like another little hat maybe like a baseball hat but instead of the brim going straight out it like curves up and we've got another little lip happening there. And like I said, you don't have to drive yourself crazy when you're drawing this rose and like do this to every single one. If you did, you'll have a really photorealistic drawing by the time that you're done. And that could be very gratifying, but you can, you know, just focus on the details on a few of these petals and then um, let the rest of it be kind of loose, you know, like when I did this scribble sketch of this rose, I definitely didn't put this level of detail into it. You know, I maybe paid attention to a few of these little detailed moments here at the center and a few more like more specific moments. But for the most part, I just kind of like that one right there. All I've got is a squiggle line and a little bit of a shading around it, you know, so you can let it kind of blur out and be loose in some areas and just, you know, put some heightened focus in a few other areas and you're still going to achieve that overall um, optical illusion. So uh, we had a class on drawing trees uh, back in, I think, September, October, and I talked about this in that class as well, like putting some details on a few moments of the trees, but then letting the rest of the, the tree uh, shapes, you know, branches be kind of similar and repetitive and, you know, following a similar pattern. But if you can just, you know, wrap your brain around 
these contours on a few of these. Okay, so now we want to add our value on top of it and we want to make our value follow the uh, directional elevational path that we're seeing. So first I can put that nice deep 10 shadow right there. I've also got another 10 moment, like a 10 on the value scale right here. And it also gets pretty dark right here as well. And then I've got maybe a seven or an eight on the value scale around the petal. So this is what I'm talking about. It's the shadows next to the petal that make you see the petal that you're looking at, especially on a white rose like this. So I'm shading next to it and that's gonna push that particular petal forward. Um, and then the shadow that I'm seeing on the petal itself is pretty light, but see how I'm making my value that I'm adding follow those contour lines and follow that directional path. That's why those contour lines are so helpful. Same thing here, as I'm adding this shadow, which is maybe like a five or a six on the value scale, I'm gonna switch to a, a lighter pencil, maybe an H here, so that it can become like a, a two or a three as it lightens up right here, but I'm following that elevational path. So same thing everywhere, I'm gonna put like a two or a three following those contour lines as I add it. If I were to just shade it straight across, then it's gonna tell the viewer that they're looking at something flat, but it's not flat, it's very curved. It's got a lot of subtle little nuanced dips and curves happening. So understanding where those dips and curves are happening and then applying your value in a way that follows that curve is going to create the optical illusion that you're looking for and matching the, the value that you're seeing around it to make it come forward. But as I'm adding this value, I'm actually working on the pedal next to it, right? So they're all so connected. So this is how you can kind of guide yourself around the rows if you really want to take your time. but there are no rules, I ought to say, when it comes to art. Um, whenever we get like focused like this on something, it can be really easy to fall into the trap of feeling like there's some right or wrong way to draw this, you know? I'm just kind of giving you a little guide here to help you observe, to help you look and see what's happening and primarily to help you slow down. So this is just a little, um, boost that I, hopefully I've given you for observation. And if, you know, that person who said earlier in the class, I'll never look at a rose the same way again, hearing that makes me feel like I did my job because really all I wanted to do here was help us have a slowed down understanding of the, you know, fundamental parts that make up the rose and to really zoom in and gain an understanding of all of those parts. And I've Feel like we achieved that. So we are at the end of our hour here. We've got five minutes left. Um, does anybody want to share their their sketches or their notes at this point? And if you just hold them up, um, Chanel can spotlight you and we can see what you've been working on. And maybe a few of you kept going and have a nice have more of a product than I do, but even if we're just looking at your diagrams, I'm happy. Oh, look at that, Sarah, that's wonderful. Very nice. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love the strawberry background there. Oh yeah, you got really far focusing on the, the circles. Nice. You could apply these same methods to draw on those strawberries next. Um, hold it up a little closer if you can. Very nice. Yeah. All right. I'm seeing some nice value happening. I want to love those notes and that's those diagrams. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Look at that. Yes. Very nice. Love all those organic shapes. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Close up of a tea rose. Beautiful. Oh, that's off to such a great start. Yeah, I love that you did what we're doing here in the center, but did it on the, the larger drawing. So you could just keep going and you'll have a, a nice tea rose if you keep going on the whole thing. Very nice. Oh, that one where you zoomed in on the petals is really convincing. All those little lips on top or so soft. That's looking really great. Oh, wow. Oh, I love that you did it big. Oh, look at those lines. That quality of line is so nice and strong. Oh, you've got a really nice sense of movement and form happen happening there. Very impressive. Love it. Oh, I love those detailed petals with the contour lines. Oh, look at those, that soft value. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm glad you took my advice and used a light pencil for those, those outer regions. And yeah, you can even just stay nice and light like that and just keep building up until you're, you're ready to add those darker values. There's never any rush to add the darker values. I was just doing it, you know, to, so you guys could see my drawing. Wonderful. Love that. Just keep going, keep doing what you're doing there. Oh, look at that. That is really coming across so far. You are creating the optical illusion of a rose. Yes. And again, those nice soft lines. And I like you, that you're using the little scribble technique there as well. Oh yes, that's lovely. Oh, I love all those organic shapes. Oh, we got another one in, in the group there. Very nice. <laughs> oh, and another one. And look at those diagrams. Oh, you guys did, all did a wonderful job. Um, I saw somebody asked about the time of the class. No, the class will be at 6 p.m. Um, going forward. I just happened to have a couple of uh, family functions a um, few weeks in a row, but yeah, the class will be at 6 p.m. Um, going forward next week. And oh, look at that. Did you use a charcoal pencil or something? Oh, I love the contrast that you're getting with the, the darker shadows and the, the lighter values there. Yeah, and how you're being more general and then more specific. And in some areas that is so convincing. Ooh, very nice. Yes, look at that detail. I love how those little, those three little petals stacked on top of each other, are just so nice and soft. That value is gorgeous. Yes, just keep doing what you're doing there. Oh, I love seeing all these very advanced drawings from our youngsters in the group. Oh my goodness. She said it was hard for me, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> you did such a wonderful job. I love it. Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh, look at that. Wow, you guys had such lovely roses. Well, please tag me on um, social media or send me the examples. Um, or, you know, if you do the hashtags, make it with Michael's or Michael's classes sometimes those posts get a little buried um, on Instagram, so it's hard to find them. But if you tag me at Adrian Hodge Art, then I'll be sure to see them. Um, or if you wanna just send them to me, I just love getting student drawings from these classes. Um, well, it was such a lovely class and um, I appreciate you all and uh, hope to see you next week for uh, Blind Contour Hands. I um, hope everyone has a nice evening. Thank you.